actually not me, it's more Chuck. Of course, it's actually, so, uh, the problem statement. If you want to, yeah, sure, might be helpful because after all, it's basically your code. Um, so, the problem statement. We are trying to do, to implement TLS for network storage. So, um, Chuck is doing the NFS bit, I'm doing the NVMe bit, and we are, there are proposals and specifications how you should be running TLS on either NVMe or NFS. The problem is that we can't use the normal or the time-honored approach of doing the initial handshake for TLS in user space and then pass, thing, pass things down to the kernel for handle the actual, um, the actual encrypted traffic. This is the model how the current in-kernel TLS implementation has been designed. So you have to do the initial handshake, then pass in the initialization vectors into the kernel, and then the kernel will continue to do the encrypted traffic. Sadly, this model doesn't work for us because the, uh, in our case, the socket, the initial socket had to be, has to be established in kernel as there is some initial handshake unencrypted needed to be done on an existing socket. So we, ha we, are, we are having the reverse problem that we need to pass an existing socket slash file descriptor up to user space. And we've searched high and low and found that there actually is no way how you could do that in the kernel. Yes, so the one thing is one could do the handshake, could do everything in the kernel. As it so happened, there is a company who did that so, yeah, so, okay, so there's a company called Tempesta who did exactly that. And surprise, surprise, it works. But surprise, 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 it's a lot of code. And it's a lot of security relevant code. So it's not only that you, that you have to co code it, but you also have to do an audit to see whether that what you code is actually sensible and doesn't have any security implications. Right, which right is, in Rust. <laughs> no? Yeah, and we, yeah, exactly, right in Rust. Yay. Of course, yeah. Um, we did think of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, and once you did that, then you have to fight the kernel community to put it in because that's arguably something which really shouldn't be in the kernel. And for half of the developers who would say, oh no, gosh, that's a user land thing, that's a, uh, that's a policy issue and doesn't belong into the kernel. So, if you, you decided to try and solve this by passing a file descriptor up, what about just using the kernel as the man in the middle? So just pass the packets up there. That we looked into, but if, if you do that, then you lose the main benefit of file descriptor passing, which is you can use existing libraries. So if you pass up the file descriptor, you can easily just hook an open SSL, GNU you know, TLS. They, that's precisely what their current design of these libraries are. So you just need to have a very, very simple stop, basically just telling OpenSL, oh, instead here's your file descriptor, go. And it does. If you're passing up packets, you would need to teach GNU TLS or OpenSSL to, well, read, do the packets. Well, not if you put them into a PTY and then attach the PTY to OpenSSL. TTY to OpenSSL. Yeah, and just do a cat, yeah, right, of course. I mean, no. What, what I was thinking about at a very high level is that even if you didn't upstream that code, yeah. there's value in having all, well, I'm assuming for argument's sake, that the TLS code in user space that you'd be linking to works perfectly. Yeah, sure. Because of it's well tested and it's been around for yeah, years exactly. and all that. So, so that it really, yeah. this, is, and, uh, uh, this is not a direction we actively pursue. Right. Because but, it's but for testing, it's your guinea pig, it's your reference because you do your whatever at the NVMe level or at the NV NFS level, you convince yourself, yep, it works. All of this stuff works. Whatever the minor protocol tweaks you have to do with your stuff work. Because I've been thinking about this for SMB over quick. It's the same thing. It's like, find an example where everything is off called to user space. Convince yourself you have a reference platform. Stuff it off to the side and then begin the work on this. Yeah. But the problem I, that I just banged my head in the wall is I could find zero good samples for calling anything socket-like that does an up call. So, so I think. So, like, like, take you know whether you're talking about TLS yeah. or Quick. Yeah. I want to send a packet over the network, whether it's Quick or yeah. over the yeah. TLS over TCP, whatever. I want to send it to a user space library. 
Yeah. I could find no mapping example, no good upcall example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Neither did we. So yes, you're right. There is none because there is no mechanism for it. So we had been pondering how to do it. I had been looking briefly looking into Netlink, whether one could use update Netlink to do this file descriptor parsing um, on the grounds that there already is this POSIX compliant file descriptor parsing stuff, which goes via the Unix socket. But then looking at the code, this is pretty much centered around the Unix so socket itself. So there was no easy way to copy that over to, um, to the Netlink socket. And it essentially would mean that I would need to invent a completely new mechanism how you could do file descriptor parsing via Netlink. And what right. with me not being a network pe uh, not network person, I didn't really feel comfortable with that. I, so, so you can look at NVD. NVD does this. Like NVD passes the file descriptor for the socket that's been sent up through Netlink. You can configure, like, we did this for MVD because we wanted to be able to, like, let you, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, didn't they use, in the end, a fallback to call user mode helper? What? Didn't no, the, like, there's the, exi like, the old yeah. IOCTL interface, but there is a new Netlink interface for configuring NVD, and yeah. we pass the file descriptors through Netlink to NVD to so connect I it up. I thought the mechanism was user space creates the yeah. endpoint and passes it down to the kernel, yeah. not the other way around, which is what we need. Oh, oh, okay, I see. I thought you were saying that you couldn't get it through Netlink yeah. from user space, which you can, yeah. but I guess the other way is yeah. problematic. And, there is, and the problem with the Netlink socket is that you, um, that you have quite a potential security issue there because you need to format the Netlink message and install if, uh, stri the file descriptor in the, uh, in the process table of the receiving process in two steps. But if you do it when creating the message, then the process receiving the message has no way of saying no. It can't reject the mes message because the file descriptor is already installed in the process table. And if you do it the other way around, that you try to install the, um, the handle when the receiving process reads the message, you have the problem of a potential security violation because, well, it means that one process needs to reach out, reach out to something else into the kernel. Oh, give me that. Trust me. That'll, that'll be fine. You, you can Post just uninstall the file descriptor. Once you, you don't have to keep it there once you install it. So if you get a failure of the message, you can take it back again. Yes, but it's, uh, the point is that it's an easy way to overflow your, or, or the file descriptor of, of processes. The process has no way of saying, no, I don't need, I, I can't do it because I need the file descriptors which I open for other purposes. So please don't do it. You have no yeah, way of telling And you shouldn't be closing that file descriptor because in between you installing it and you getting a failure, user space may have closed it and opened something else in the same file descriptor. Yeah. If you end up with a stale open file descriptor, which is also not, not, not a good thing. So, not but a good thing. So, anyway, so here comes Chuck. With the right, right, before you start. I'd like to interject one thing. Uh, with the, I think it's uh, TLS 1.3, yeah. I think the crypto layer actually has all the bits you need. You just need to call, call them. So all, all the, uh, the uh, KDF stuff, bits yeah, and uh, you're all there. So the, the crypto layer has the bits for parsing and handling mess uh, control messages once the um, encrypted connection is established. It, you still have the old mechanism that you have to pass in the initialization vector and and uh, the, and the socket, and then you have then you have encrypted communication running across this. Granted, with the TLS 1.3 protocol and all the mechanisms there, yeah, fine. But the initial handshake still still is in user space or expected to be in user space. Well, why can't it be done in the kernel? Yeah, because of dollar reasons, as we just discussed, we can. But so in chat, uh, Enzo said that uh, FreeBSD NFS that does NFS over TLS. Do you know how they do it there? They pass an open socket endpoint up to a user agent, and it does a handshake. That we have uh, a library implementation, probably OpenSSL. Um, yeah, most of these uh, in-kernel consumers are passing a passing the socket up to user space and using a, a, an existing library implementation. So, uh, And the security community has been encouraging us to take the same <coughs> approach. Um, another reason we need to pass an open connection uh, up to the kernels because for the server side, it's doing the accepts in the kernel. 
So the kernel has a listener, it doesn't accept there, and that's a connected endpoint that we have to pass up to user space to do a server hello. Um, so w there kind of isn't any way around uh, passing an open, uh, a connected endpoint up to user space. Um, so what I did was uh, I used uh, a second listener. The, uh, I created a, a user agent that listens on a special uh, address family and when a kernel consumer needs a handshake, it queues uh, its, its connected endpoint on this listener. And um, the uh, user agent does a poll and it, it accepts. So that materializes the connected endpoint in the, in the user agent's uh, file descriptor table immediately right there. And then we just pass this to GNU TLS. It does its magic and uh, it does the set sock opt calls to initialize the IV in the, in the socket and then closes it. And the close basically tells the kernel, okay, the user agent's done with this endpoint and it can use it. So at that point, the kernel checks to see whether the IVs actually were implanted. That means it was a successful handshake. If not, it was an unsuccessful handshake and the socket's thrown away. And then uh, we, we, away we go to the races based uh, using the uh, existing KTLS infrastructure in the kernel. So uh, we both uh, have implemented prototypes. Uh, NVMe on T TCP uh, can use this. Uh, I've got one, RPC with TLS can do this. Um, we're hoping we can build infrastructure that uh, Quick can reuse because Quick v1 uses the TLS 1.3 handshake protocol um, as it establishes connections. Um, but we are getting some pushback from various peoples, peoples in the, um, the networking community. One, uh, I guess to flesh out the objection to an in-kernel handshake, it was that basically doing it in-kernel will uh, expand the attack surface. Um, because the handshake code is, I don't know, probably 15 to 20,000 lines of code. Uh, and e even though we're basically, um, the handshake itself would be the, the new logic, uh, the existing crypt, uh, cipher code, the cryptic code, and the X509 code is already in the kernel, so we're not adding any footprint there. Um, I'm actually not sure w what we're coming to this up august body to ask. We, we want to ask if anyone else is interested in this. And well, that's one thing, yeah. Microphone. Microphone. That's the mic. Yes, that's the mic. Um, and the um, overarching question is um, whether we should keep on going with having things in user land, meaning uh, doing the TLS negotiation in user land, or, the, or whether it's worthwhile or mandatory or required to look into having everything in kernel. That's actually the main thing here. Uh, speaking from somebody who's been bitten by this a fair bit, I am extremely allergic to adding anything to the kernel. In fact, I would like to delete most of it and put it all in user space. Uh, that being said, we already have a lot of this code in the kernel, right? Like we already have all of the crypto code. So it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Like, uh, Clearly there's no, no, we don't have it all. So TLS has a huge amount of handshaking code that is missing from the kernel. That's precisely what they're doing in user space. Well, it's we have all the crypto primitives, the but we don't have. Oh, we have the primitives. Okay, sorry. It's a little less these days. 1.3's handshake is probably half half the protocol that 1.2 was, and we don't need 1.2. Both of us want 1.3 only, at, and above 1.3 and above. So that reduces the size of the code we're talking about. Um, and I, you know, I'm happy to do a prototype with an upcall. It's just, you know, what are we gonna do in the long term is the question. But have you seen the, so I had the unfortunate job of having to look through open SSL bug reports. Have you seen how many they have on the 1.3 handshake, how difficult it was for them to get it right? It may be less to do than 1.2, but it's damn complicated to do it. But yeah. But now we have implementation examples, so how hard could it be? <laughs> yeah. the, the, the other thing I to note here is that even though we might have certain things in the kernel, like for example, certificate processing, it's a very, very small subset of all of the strange and wondrous things that you can put in a cert, um, which some customers will want. And I would not, I, I, it really is better to do all of this in user space, please. <laughs> I, I but we, d we don't need to pass the entire certificate. 
We just need the bit out of it, and then we c keep a copy of the certificate to send on to the other side if necessary. Yeah. I, I think you have two different slogs in front of you. One slog is putting all of the handshake stuff in the kernel, and the other slog is setting up this communication system so that you can do it in user space. The user space one is going to be much more usable in the long term, and it's going to save you a lot of pain as you know the different handshaking things change, or we have security things that we need to patch very quickly. Well, the so one I would do the user space slog. The one issue that we don't feel very comfortable with with the user space one is how we're going to deal with a root file system or a root uh, block device, because as soon as uh, you hit a direct reclaim memory pressure. Um, we're going to need to do an up call to reestablish the TLS session, and the yeah. user agent's not going to be there. So we have to do something to make sure it's M locked or it's um, made special s in some way so that um, the kernel can rely on it. So that's one issue. The other issue is uh, a problem that I don't think anybody has solved yet, and that is how does the kernel know it can trust who it's talking to on the other end? I mean, uh, it's it's up calling to something. Is it trustworthy? Can the kernel ha have some kind of attestation that, that that thing is what it expects it to be? Um, we haven't solved that problem. Certainly, uh, listen, uh, full except closed does not solve that problem. Um, yep. But we don't we don't feel like any of the other security related uh, user helpers like GSSD have solved that problem either. So you know, we're open to suggestion there. Yeah, I mean, this is the previously unsolved problem of assuming that request firmware and request module are in fact what you want it to be, and we're just sort of, you know, the assertion is that SBIN request module is sane, right? And I think we rely on that if we need to have another SBIN, you know, request TLS that we, no, you know, has to be there for the root file system. It's as good as what we have for everything else where we do kernel up calls. We can certainly put all of this mechanism into the init RAM FS, and that, that kind of solves the problem. But with request kind of. module, we do actually have signatures on the module it loads. So we may not be able to trust what request module does, but it gives us an image we can check. Yeah, I think that these kind of problems are out of scope for what they're asking, right? Like, do we do this in user space? Do we do it in kernel space? Uh, I'm clearly biased against kernel space. Um, but practically speaking, it does allow us to m a little bit of flexibility to do it in user space and adding things like quick and other shit later on. Right. And I think for the prototype, that makes a lot of sense until we, we have our legs under us and we understand what all of the issues are and what we need to, to do. User space is absolutely the way to go. Um, so I, the hopes for doing this in the kernel are, of course, dwindling every time I give a talk in front of people like this. <laughs> Well, well, you say that, but, but let's back up a little. This isn't the networking summit. If, for argument's no, sake... No, it would be worse if it was. Uh, well, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll believe that. But, but at the same time, if, for argument's sake, we can boot systems and use this somehow and we figured out NFS and, and then, you know, SMB already supports QUIC on, our, on other platforms, you know, if we supported QUIC, if we supported NFS and NVMe, think about the networking guys. They might actually take this on in their summit and go decide if it's a good idea to do additional pieces in the kernel. Like, I guess what I'm saying is once you have a consumer, you're a consumer, NFS, then maybe the networking guys think about the, what's the best solution because it's really not a, a file system topic in some sense, right? No, no, it's surely not. It is, and, and actually you're completely right. It's actually more something like a networking topic because, well, this is more or less pure net networking stuff. But the beauty is that you're making them, by, by turning on a user space up call, and maybe later for SMB, maybe later for other things, um, you're creating a customer demand for them to yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. Clearly. But and also, I presume maybe that it, is. it's not likely that the handshaking will ever be offloaded to a, net, a network card. I presume it's always going to have to be done by the host, the operating system of the user space. It's never going to be done by the NIC. Yeah, I think it's a huge, a, a huge lump of policy. So yeah, it's always yeah. going to have to be in, done yeah. by the uh, host OS. Yeah. Plus, not only a huge bunch of policy, but also a huge pile of legacy, because um, I found that quite some libraries always try to figure out right which version to use. So essentially, they always start off with 1.2, and only if they figured, oh, you can actually 1.3, finally then go up for 1.3. Yeah, so uh, I actually hadn't been able to establish a connection by just claiming to the 1.3. So there's tons of legacy stuff involved. And the NIC would require a load of certificates as well, I presume. 
see very probably, yeah, this is it. As far as having the uh, networking people do it, we've got some pushback on that because they don't have any consumer for this. They don't see, you know, tell us who, how it's going to be used and why we should do it. So that was the kind of the, the pushback that I, because we pushed, at least with, with in, in our world, and we, that's the pushback we got back. They didn't have any reason for doing it. So you know, that, that's, so do you mean we come up with it, because we're the only consumer. Do you mean reason to use TLS as opposed to a different el encryption technology? Yes. Yes, they were not. They were not. They were not because uh, uh, we're the only consumer. If well, there are other so consumers, then it's worth their while. TLS gives us a uh, TLS gives us two services that are very important. The first one is uh, it enables mutual peer authentication using the XO509 certificates provided on both ends. Um, so a server can authenticate the client to know that okay, this is a client I recognize. I will trust the users on this client to do what they need to do. And the clients can authenticate the server so they know they're talking to the right data store. Um, the, the second facility it provides is uh, in transit uh, encryption, and not only encryption in transit, but also encryption that can be offloaded into a, a specialized hardware so that the host doesn't have to do it. Um, so we think these two things are great value adds for storage protocols. Um, they're not directly provided by things like WireGuard or IPsec. Um, we'd have to kind of have to do little twists and, and big toe stand, handstands and whatnot to, to make it actually work with those. But TLS is a, is a broadly de deployed and widely understood uh, internet building block that we have a lot of confidence in building on. That's, that's why we, that's basically why we chose it. Well, the other th specific thing, if you're going to do MTLS, is the fact that you need a private key somewhere. And most people like private keys to be stored in things like TPMs or YubiKeys or something else. We don't want all of that pulled into the car. So that's an implementation detail, but it's, it's going to be something that we'll have to consider because right now the certificate is coming from a, a file on the, on the client or server. Um, and it's specified on the mount command line or it's specified when you start RPC NFSD or however oh, you want to do it, yeah. And basically what we're doing is we're putting those certs in a, a, a kernel key ring so that uh, they're visible to the, the handshake agent. Um, so, you know, if we have a special tool that says instead of looking in the, in the key ring, go look in the TPM, the, the, great, the, the, we could do are, that. There are key utilities, key, kernel key ring utilities for dealing with the uh, getting stuff out of the TPM now. So uh, this think. is an asymmetric key. We just removed all of that from the kernel. It was for TPM 1.2. This is why user space is good. <laughs> so it, it may be a bit early here with uh, in terms of where this is at since you're, we're still trying to figure out you know where, where it should belong, but um, I see how, in terms of the prototype that you've done, uh, using the uh, it kind of accept close uh, lifecycle is really nice and clean um, in terms of getting it to work. But you're not getting any additional data along with the file descriptor when it's passed up. So, yeah, like we you've are. already got two in kernel users. How does the the user space portion know, or does it need to know? you know, which one it's servicing. What if you have yes. different configuration so needs on what needs to be done for NFS versus NVMe? So the way we've addressed this is that the special address family has a, a set of socket options um, so that they can parameterize the uh, handshake. So you can provide the certificate, a PSK, pre-shared pre key, um, and it can ask uh, for various types of handshake. Uh, for example, it could ask for a client hello, a server hello, a rekey, session rekey, or a closure uh, alert. Um, basically, that information is, is uh, an enum that's passed up in a, in, in a, a set of socket options. Um, some people find that terribly distasteful and ugly. Um, I'm not going to argue the aesthetics, but that's basically how we can parameterize the handshake requests. Um, does the TLS handshake demon know what the uh, the protocol is who's asking for it? Not really. Okay, no, but as long as, no. it, as long as it knows what its requirements are, that, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's a really good one that's from my perspective. That um, it's all basically in terms of TLS 
for, um, properties, what TLS would need to be done, which handshake parameters will need to be passed. So it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, isn't aware which protocol in the end will be running across the TLS line. It will just pa well, par put in parameters for the TLS session and that's it. So it can be repurposed for, well, literally any needs or so that's the help. So I, um, I, I, since you're having so much trouble with the networking guys, I would r really recommend a Netlink based solution here because you can do things like multicast from your thing and say, hey, I need a socket and you can parameterize all these things in Netlink and then you can just have a random thing listening on this multicast socket and say, oh, okay, I need to do this handshake now and do the thing. Well, and multicast so wouldn't work. So we, we, um, if we were going with the Netlink route, multicast wouldn't work because you, we need to pass the file descriptor to specific tasks, not, not to all tasks. That doesn't really work. Then we would have a multiplex file descriptor or something like, no way. It needs to be a single task, meaning we can only do a unicast and we have to reject multicast for okay. Netlink. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Any other questions? So I know on the networking side, Jacob Kaczynski is doing a bunch with KTLS right now. Uh, so He was uh, the most uh, uh, vocal about how ugly the set sock opt uh, handshake parameterization worked. He, he's certainly vocal, but uh, easy to talk to about better ways to do it. So th that would be my advice. Okay. Yeah, and on the we related do. topic, I know there's been a lot of people mentioning QUIC to, you know, at various conferences the last year or two. Um, and obviously other operating systems have an in kernel, have quick in kernel, and it depends on about, you know, some of what you're talking about. So I am curious if people, you know, have ideas who to follow up with on that. There have been like four or five user space drivers talked about, but quick is sort of like TCP, right? It gives you, it fixes all these things with TCP. It's more of a network protocol that depends on TLS. So it's, I guess, easier to talk about in kernel in some sense, because it's more like TCP, right? It, it, it solves problems TCP has, but it depends on TLS as well. But this is an area where we really need a lot of help from the networking side. And the guys I've been talking to have all been user space maintainers, not kernel maintainers. Just Stephen Heminger, I think, is the only one I've talked to on the kernel maintainer side. Um, so if you guys, have you had kernel discussions with other people other than what we've talked about on the networking side? Well, we had quite a bit of discussion last week with uh, Jacob. Jacob. Um, because he finally woke up to the, uh, to the fact that we do it um, once Chuck posted his uh, pr uh, prototype. And we did have quite some discussion about the correct interface. And that is why um, we have such intense discussion now about Netlink, because that's precisely what he suggested. So why can't you use, use Netlink? Uh, yes, we could, but then this is far more work for de first designing the whole thing and then implementing it, blah, 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 the whole gear. Whereas the accept one is just a logical thing because that just literally falls out of the use model of accept. So that was easy to implement. All right, let's uh, wrap this up. We've got a break. <laughs>